in 40 years, my wife wants me to live longer, but in 40 years, let's say 50, we'll be dead, right? So... Is that why you say that the death is the biggest elephant in the room? Oh, yes. Yes, that's a that's a super big elephant in the room. Maybe the big elephant in the room because we, we, we feel we're mortal, but we... We do everything we can to never talk about that, never entertain it. In Spain, there was this program, a TV program in the 90s. You know, we had a, this dictatorship for many decades. And then the program was called Let's Talk About Sex, right? It was a success. We just let's talk about it. So there's the er er Eros and Thanatos. These are the two elephants in the room and these kind of these forces. And... We all, I, I wonder, look, let me say another thing. This may sound polemic, but, and you can cut it out or you can, you can cut out when I say you can cut it out or you cannot cut out anything. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Dennett recently passed away. Right. All right. Thousands of people everywhere saying how wonderful. I, mean, I, I never really quite understood or appreciated what he wrote. I must say it's my inability. But anyways, I wondered, if he's such a wise man, like the wise man, the wise man of the secular, atheist, materialist West, I wonder, and I wondered with true compassion, really, I'm not trying to be sarcastic here, when he was dying, when he knew he was going, as he was transitioning, as he was passing away, did all those books made a difference or not? Right? If philosophy is preparation for death, I think we're not doing a good job. Right? And then the, the corollary question would be, you know, his book wa was called I've Been Thinking. Well, I wonder what is he thinking now? If anything, that's another thing, right? So, yeah. But what's, we, what's the moral? We sh what's the moral then? If, what's if the moral? What we the do moral, doesn't matter? No, the moral is consciousness for real. I mean, we are, death is part of life. But, but, and also we, we think we live our own lives. Okay, it sounds like self-help section here, but I have no <laughs> books to sell, so I'm free. That may be one of the reasons I, I say myself, I don't have a book to promote or a metaphysical idiom to promote. So it's like, I travel light, you know? No, no conflict of interests. That sounds like self-help here, but we say we live our lives. No, lives we life leaves us i mean we, like we're instruments for that thing to happen and we spend hours kind of replying emails and articulating logical thoughts and just waiting the evidence and and you know being angry about people disagreeing and what are we doing that for you know what's what's the goal what's the ultimate goal of all of that we're doing right and and then the horizon is, is Part of the horizon is death. And so that doesn't mean we need to be obsessed with it or just carpe diem. Like these are stupid, I think these are stupid solutions. It's not about that. It's more like embodying our, our own humanity. We're mortal, but I think we're animals and we're also divine beings and, and we're mortal, but I also believe a part of us is immortal. So that's what we should be talking about. Um, make those elephants sometimes present. Say, can we let the... <laughs> Let's thank the speaker again. Can we let the elephant speak now? And it's a bit scary because it's for real. It is for real, right? Like if idealism is correct, I want to know what it tells about my life and me as an individual, whether I'll totally dissolve or not, about, yeah, about what happened when I'm dead, what happened to my ancestors, are they still here? Why, why did I have kids? What will they do? What's the future of humanity? What is this planet all about? These are all the things I want to know. Not just what neural correlate of, you know, seeing red. I mean, forget about that. That's the game we need to play as academics. But who cares about that? That's irrelevant, right? We, we, it's the big questions that are very... Look, I, let me tell you another concrete thing. I, I always do the dishes, as I said. I'm a bit traumatized by that. <laughs> so so I would always kind of do the dishes and, and sometimes think, fuck, you know, again, you know, I'm just wasting all this time. Just if I could only read so much as I'm doing the dishes, you know, like, and, and I have a dishwasher, but it, it still takes time. 
<laughs> and then then I almost died. And then when I when I came back, the first time I did the dishes again, I just what a felt, privilege. What I a just, privilege, right? Yeah, I just felt like <laughs> I can be enlightened doing the dishes, right? So I want this hint of awareness to just permeate my entire life. In a way, I want to become a saint, not in the religious way. I don't want the Vatican to just, you know, that's what I want. And, and that's what we all want. <laughs> so maybe that's too, that's too much to ask for, for YouTube or philosophy or, or universities. But anyways, that's, that's what I think it's at hand. 